Delight in a picturesque setting that evokes the romance of rural Louisiana. Today we're going to talk about Disney's Port Orleans Riverside Resort here on What Disney World Adults Only. <laughs> I'm Dan and you're watching Walt Disney World Adults Only. Today we're going to be talking about Disney's Port Orleans Riverside Resort. Now this is the second largest resort at Walt Disney World in terms of the number of rooms. Both Port Orleans French Quarter and Port Orleans Riverside combined make up the Port Orleans Resort and this resort is the biggest resort in the whole of Walt Disney World. So today I'll be telling you about Riverside. We've already got a video about French Quarter, which I'll link in the description below. But the big difference is I haven't yet stayed at Riverside myself. In fact, of our presenting team, only Jackie has stayed here so far. And she'll be joining us a bit later to give us her experience of staying at Riverside. I also have Helen joining me a bit later as well. She hasn't stayed there either, but like me, she has visited and she has dined there as well. And finally, Natalie will be joining us as well, and she'll be telling us whether this is a resort that she would like to stay at on a future trip. Before we get started, please click subscribe and give me the thumbs up as well, or the thumbs down if you prefer, they actually both help us out. And then in the comments below, tell us, have you visited Riverside? Have you stayed there? What is your own impression of this resort? As I told you in the French Quarter video, Port Orleans Resort is made up of two sister resorts, Port Orleans Riverside and Port Orleans French Quarter. These sister resorts are themed to look like New Orleans and the Old South, and both are situated on the Sasagula River. These are both moderate level resorts in the Disney Springs Resort area, and Riverside originally opened back in 1992 and was originally called Disney's Dixie Landings Resort. Now Riverside has two different sections, the Alligator Bayou and Magnolia Bend buildings. There are 1,024 guest rooms in Alligator Bayou and these are housed inside 16 buildings styled as rustic weathered lodges. Each building has 64 rooms. Magnolia Bend also has 1,024 rooms, but these are situated in just four buildings themed as Southern Plantation Grand Manor Homes. So that is 256 rooms per building. In April 2001, this resort took its new and current name, Port Orleans Riverside Resort. And one of the best things about staying at this resort is that guests staying at Riverside can also use all the facilities at French Quarter and of course vice versa too. In terms of price point, Riverside is quite comparable with French Quarter and also Caribbean Beach Resort. Coronado Springs tends to be slightly more, but there really isn't too much in it. They are all around the same kind of price point. In 2011, Disney transformed about a quarter of the rooms at Riverside into royal guest rooms. These rooms are a higher price point, but in reality, other than some cute touches of magic, they really do not justify the higher price commanded. But in these rooms, you'll find special headboards that create a firework display, special genie lamp tap fittings, and royal palace style curtains. If you ask me, absolutely not worth the upcharge, particularly for an adult only trip, I'd go as far to say that these rooms are quite gaudy and ghastly, but of course some people will love these touches. Personally, I'll take a peasant room and save the money and spend that money drinking around the world or bringing home some wonderful Disney art. One huge bonus about Riverside is that it has six pools. Compared to French Quarter, which only has one, this is huge. But with so many more guests, I guess this is probably required. So the main pool is called Old Man Island and it is literally on an island, accessible via three wooden bridges. And this is such a great pool, I've been in it. It has a slide and waterfalls too. There is a whirlpool tub as well, and the five other pools are more adult leisure pools. There are three in Alligator Bayou and two located in Magnolia Bend. In terms of transportation, Riverside offers the standard bus transportation to guests. There are four different bus stops around the resort, and like French Quarter, there is boat transportation here too. The boat transportation goes to Disney Springs, but it also stops at French Quarter too, 
Although I will say that French Quarter is walking distance, it's actually a really nice walk along the Sasagula River. Riverside's dining options include table service restaurant Boat Rights, which I have to admit gets very mixed reviews. But this is described as bona fide bites in the Big Easy. It is a huge dining hall with hanging lanterns and the skeletal hull of a lugger fishing boat suspended as the centerpiece. Here you will find flavours of the Bayou. It only opens to dinner, but you'll find an incredibly different menu to what you'll find anywhere else at Walt Disney World. Next there is a quick service, Riverside Meal Food Court, and I've personally dined here. It's a really, really great quick service actually, and there are six different food stations here. The bakery, the grill, pizza and pasta, salads, specialities, and a carving station too. Lots of selections here, and they open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I'll tell you my experience of dining here a little bit later. There are two watering holes here, River Roost and Muddy Rivers, and pre-COVID, Yeehaw Bob used to entertain guests. I hear rumours that Yeehaw Bob may be making a return when the resort reopens, but for now, they are just rumours. One other thing to tell you is that you can get a horse-drawn carriage ride here as well, along the Sasagula River. $55 for a 25 minute ride, and the carriages can fit up to four adults. How romantic could this be? Hands up, who wants to see Taylor and Jake doing a horse-drawn carriage ride in their next vlog series? Anyway, there you are. I think I've covered all the basics. Please ask any questions you have in the comments below. I'm always happy to help. Now for my experience. I haven't actually stayed here, but in 2017, I stayed at Port Orleans French Quarter. As I mentioned, if you stay at one of the Port Orleans resorts, you're invited to use the facilities of both. It really is a great bonus. So I visited Riverside about three times during my trip to swim in Old Man Island Pool, to have a look around, and to dine at Riverside Mill as well. Now, I'll start by telling you that this resort is picturesque, romantic, and generally quite stunning. The grounds are so well kept, and the atmosphere is laid back, relaxed, and really quite tranquil. Considering the size of the resort and the number of rooms, it never seemed to be busy. The lobby, however, is vast and grand. The pool here was also really awesome, much bigger than the pool at French Quarter, and it had lots of extra things to see and do. I particularly like the waterfalls, and love the fact that this pool was on its own island. And dining at Riverside Mill was just brilliant. The big mill wheel is actually fascinating to watch, and I would suggest this is one of the best quick service restaurants in the whole of Walt Disney World. So much selection now. Some great unique items, and really friendly, happy cast members here too. I remember that I had a delicious southern fried shrimp platter, which came with coleslaw, fries, and a fried green tomato. I remember ordering it and asking for it without the fried green tomato, and the cast member looking actually stunned as she tried to explain to me that it was the house speciality and the best part of the meal. The shrimp was actually really great though. They also had a surf and turf burger here too that I really wanted to try. It was a beef burger with a shrimp and crawfish patty on top of it. That sounds really yum. I also had some kind of brownie here too. And yeah, it was a really great brownie. So overall, I had all good things to say about Port Orleans Riverside, except for one thing, the buses. Now staying at French Quarter, we mostly had our own buses to the parks. One bus stop at French Quarter, which goes straight to the park. There were occasions though that we shared a bus with Riverside and driving around those four bus stops, picking people up, dropping people off, loading ECVs, unloading ECVs. <sighs> what a waste of my part time. It probably added on about half an hour at least every single time we did it. Who seriously wants to be driving around bus stops wasting their part time? Oh no, not I. So for me, as beautiful as Riverside is, Due to the buses, I will always prefer French Quarter. And of course, French Quarter has the beignets as well. Other than that though, this looks like a thoroughly lovely place to stay. Helen, I know you've dined here before, but you didn't have too much time to explore. Is this somewhere that you would like to stay in the future? Thanks, Dan. We stayed at Port Orleans French Quarter back in January 2020 and occasionally had breakfast there. However, on our last day, we decided to have a walk along the Sasagula River and have breakfast at the Riverside Mill Food Court. The quick service restaurant seemed to have more choice than French Quarter 
and the overall size of the restaurant seemed bigger too. I decided to have the chocolate chip pancakes with bacon and sausage and my partner had the waffle bounty platter which consists of Mickey waffles, scrambled egg, potato, bacon and sausage. And like most quick service breakfasts, the food was pretty average. We never really explored this resort fully and I do regret this now. However, outside was very impressive with a big mill wheel and we also saw the fishing hole and the Surrey bike rental which are both located at Riverside Levy Marina. The resort feels a lot bigger than French Quarter with lots of accommodation on the far side of the river. In fact, it has three times the amount of rooms that French Quarter has. This is still a great location with the boat running to Disney Springs and French Quarter being just a 10 minute stroll along the river. However, I think I'll be sticking with French Quarter as it feels a little bit more adult to me. Riverside is definitely not on my wish list of resorts to stay at, but I do know that Jackie stayed here recently. Tell us about your experience and would you stay here again, Jackie? Thanks, Helen. I have stayed here. It was way back in 2015 for the Princess Half Marathon. That was ages ago already. Port Orleans Riverside is really well themed. It makes you feel like you are actually at a hotel on the banks of the Mississippi River. It has a laid back and easy going ambiance. Adults, if you're looking for a hotel that's not overly Disney themed, then this is the one for you. This resort is designed for leisurely walks. There are many scenic pathways and little nooks and crannies to explore all throughout the resort. There are great places to just sit and relax after a long day in the parks or some great places to get some pictures of that park outfit. On our first evening, we took the Saskagoola River Cruise to Disney Springs for some dinner and shopping. It was a nice leisurely boat ride past Saratoga Springs Treehouse Villas and out onto Lake Buena Vista. Honestly, it was great just to slow down and relax after a hectic day of travel. We stayed in the Magnolia Bend area in the Magnolia building. It was a bit of a walk to the lobby, but not as bad as the other buildings. Our room was on the second floor, not close to any of the elevators. Not ideal after walking around all day in the parks or running a half marathon. The room we were staying at was your typical moderate room. Two queen beds, refrigerator, coffee maker, small table, and a heavy duty curtain that pulled across the sinks area separating the rest of the room from the bathrooms. This was a great option as I had early risers in my group. And I was also able to get ready for the half marathon without waking my parents up. We ate at Riverside Mill Food Court. It was nothing special, just your typical Disney hotel food court. They do have the make me waffles though. You'll want to go as early as possible in the mornings to get breakfast because as the day gets later, it gets crowded and noisy. We also visited Fulton's General Store. Again, your typical Disney gift shop with all the Disney items and some sundries and snacks. I'm sad to say that we did not get to see Yeehaw Bob perform at the River Roost on our trip back in 2015. I hear he puts on a great show. Would I stay at Port Orleans again? Probably not until I stay at all the other resorts. There are far too many I'd like to try. Natalie, I know you haven't stayed at this resort yet, but would it be on your short list of ones to try? Thanks, Jackie. Yes, I have never actually stayed on site at Walt Disney World before, which I know is probably a big surprise to a lot of you watching. Now, I do have a list of resorts I would really want to stay at and Port Orleans Riverside is definitely on that list. So of course, I've never actually visited this resort, but I've seen lots of photos, videos, and trip reviews of people that have stayed there. And this resort looks very, very pretty. I'm a big fan of the Southern architecture and the general style of the resort overall. Riverside looks like a very calm, relaxing place to get back to after a very busy day in the parks. And I'm a rope drop person and I like to spend all day there. So having somewhere that is very opposite the parks is definitely on my list of things that I want for a resort. In the evenings, it would be lovely to go for a little stroll, find a bench and just sit and watch the world go by. If I did want something a little bit different, it's also good to know that the French Quarter is just a short walk away too. The refurbished guest rooms look great as well. Now called the Royal Rooms with a hint of Princess Tiana from Princess and the Frog, it really is great. That's one of my favorite movies. 
So overall, I would definitely stay at the Riverside Resort. Well, that's all of us, Dan. So what about you? Would you stay here? Thanks, Natalie. I will say that this resort is so popular with our Facebook group members. They really love it here. And yes, it's a really beautiful resort. Would I stay? Yes, but only if French Quarter was fully booked. And I never thought I'd say this, but I would likely put Caribbean Beach above Riverside as well now. The Skyliner is really a huge game changer for me. So I would stay, but it wouldn't be my first choice of moderate resort, and it probably wouldn't be my second choice either. I feel so disloyal. So do you agree about Riverside? And which points don't you agree with? Please tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. We now have resort videos about Wilderness Lodge, Animal Kingdom Lodge, French Quarter, Pop Century and Coronado Springs Resort. Plus we have a vlog style video on Riviera Resort and we have a new vlog style video about Caribbean Beach coming out very soon. So we are certainly getting about and all of our resort videos are in a playlist. I will link that playlist in the description below and hopefully a link should appear here as well. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe and click the bell so you know when our next video drops. Join us at our adults only Facebook group. The link is in the description down below where we'll continue this discussion along with many more. And as a remember, never, 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 never. never.